again with Dr. Molly. Hello. Dr. Molly Welly, yes. thank you for being on the You're show. So welcome, I love time. having you on, as you know. Yes. This is our vet section. Uh, Dr. Molly is one of our surgeons, our lead surgeon, our head surgeon here <laughs> at Quick Fix, and an amazing doctor, absolutely amazing. We, uh, we oftentimes have to consult you after hours. You're always so nice about it, and you always care about these animals. And, um, and I just appreciate well, thank you. having you um, in our pocket, actually, so that we have the best care we can for our kit crazy I'd cats. I'd like to do it. And I know you, she, she does. <laughs> <laughs> she is always so sweet about everything. So who do we have here today? So these, this is Pinta, right? That is Pinta. Yes. And this is, well, the story is They're we got three names. cats in yes. on, Chris, on Columbus Day. And it, there was like a mom type, but she isn't really their mom. Yeah. We named her Santa Maria. So it was Nina, Pinta, and Santa Columbus Maria. Because yeah. it was Columbus so Day. Cute. But it's a boy. So <laughs> I said, we can't keep his name Nina. So I actually changed it to Nino. Yeah. It's Nino, Pinto, yeah. <laughs> and Santa <laughs> Maria. Yes. <laughs> That's what I've been naming him at my house. <laughs> because you had to do some serious yes. work on these guys. Mm -hmm. They each had to have one of their eyes enucleated, which means the actual globe, like the actual eyeball or the globe that we call it, have got removed. Yeah. And that was because um, from their upper respiratory infection, they, they probably had a virus, which is probably herpes virus. And herpes virus affects um, cat's eyes sometimes, and it can cause corneal ulcer. So the cornea is the outermost part of their eye, the thin layer on the outermost part of their eye, and the herpes virus can cause corneal, corneal ulceration, which is like a scratch in, in your eye. Like people will get corneal ulcerations if they get, someone scratches their eye, and cats will get them from fighting or from somehow getting scratched in their eyeball. It's the, the outer, outermost layer of skin gets scratched off. But these guys probably had it from herpes virus, which can affect their eyes. But they had it so bad and for mm. so long that it probably became infected and complicated and maybe even so deep that their eyeball actually ruptured. And um, they had an infection in the actual ruptured eyeball. So there was nothing that we could do but remove them. And that was because long term, because at that point, yeah. it just looked ugly. Yeah, and sometimes I tend to be more conservative, and if they can leave it, I like sometimes cats are born with a really small eye and it'll look the same way, and that maybe we just call micro ophthalmia. And if it looks like it's okay, like if they've been like that a long time, they don't have a fever, there's no discharge, it doesn't smell bad. Um, then maybe I would just leave it because the surgery is hard on them as well. You know, they have an incision, the, the surgery can get infected, the site. So I don't want to take their eye out unless that's the very best thing for them. Yeah. And in these guys, they, they had an infection. I could tell it was painful. And if you leave that in there, they're going to have a chronic infection, chronic inflammation, which is going to make them sick. So it was best for them to have their eyeballs removed. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes just aesthetically, um, some people are okay with it, mm -hmm. but a lot of our adopters are like, ooh, you yeah, know, because looks you, we yeah. could really see that eye in there. But because they were really bad, and mm -hmm. and I know you've told me also that sometimes down the line you can have trouble. Yeah. And so as a as a um, an organization, what we don't want to have happen is that somebody adopts these cats and cannot and afford problems. the enucleation later. Yeah. So sometimes we make that decision. Just to take it out now and just take you know, it out. Take, stop it before it starts. Yeah, stop it before it starts and just know that that animal is not going to suffer down yeah, and the they line. Don't, and they didn't have vision in that eye anyway. So right. it's not, I mean, the recovery is a little bit hard, but we keep them on pain meds and antibiotics and we keep them really comfortable while they're healing. At my house. Yeah, <laughs> they get to go to Wendy's house. <laughs> They've been at my yeah. house. So. so once they're healed, they're good as new. Yeah, and they have had, they came in unhandleable really mm -hmm. they were not very nice to handle kittens they this guy's really come out of his shell yeah, pinto is so sweet. <laughs> pinto is pinta <laughs> um pinto nino um he has come out of his shell he plays with balls he runs around he has a good time this guy he still hunkers down but if you say Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. he's already like food. Yeah. Food. Food. Are you hungry? Yeah. <laughs> and he will come right out for food yeah. if you say kitty, kitty, kitty and put a bowl of canned food down. The biggest thing um, with this is that it's preventable with the vaccine. So kittens can be, kittens and adult cats should be vaccinated for, um, get their FERCP vaccine starting when they're six to eight weeks old. And that will help prevent a lot of these problems. So, like you said, most barn kittens don't get their 
every three week vaccine series when they're kittens. But if you have a kitten, or if you take care of kittens, a lot of these, uh, these, a lot of these upper respiratory infections can be preventable with a simple vaccine. Yes. So that's the most important thing. Yes, absolutely. And the, our vaccines are $15, no mm -hmm. exam fee. Yeah. $15. But you know, it'd be great if they stayed together. <laughs> that would be great. They, they are, love they love each other. And he sort of protects this one. See, like he's down where he's like, if I don't move, maybe yeah, nobody you're like sees a little more me. Curious, huh? He is all over you the place. <laughs> he's a sweetie pie. He wants to know what's going on. And aren't they soft? There's, that's, I cannot believe how soft he is. Especially is super so soft. soft. They're like rabbits. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful yeah. satiny. Really, really soft. It's gray. It's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. He's gorgeous. You feel like a little rabbit. So if you can't really see in on the camera, come in and see them because mm, they so are soft. beautiful. I know there's an adopter out there that would like this kind of cat. Yes that will warm up to you. This guy has come all the way mm -hmm. through. He he comes to me, lets me hold and kiss him now. Yeah. But I kiss all my cats, as you know. <laughs> Most of them have red faces, even at home. Um, but when I first got him and I went to kiss him, oh my gosh, you would have thought that I was gonna try to eat him. Was he was like, what? <laughs> Mm, but he gets that all the time now <laughs> and they're just sweethearts look they don't even pull their feet yeah, back. they're just, they're just they're, they're very totally docile gentle, yeah. so they are up for adoption thanks yes. to you yes come get them come on and get them <laughs> and thanks for being on the you're show. welcome thank you okay bye